Oh, I'm all for the weird stuff. This is yeah, yeah, me too. But uh, yeah, I've owned this forever. Um, I bought this actually out of the UP of Michigan. Okay. I drove up there one night after work, and uh, the guy had two of these. Um, they were sitting out in the bog. Um, the only thing I could see was up to the bottom of the <laughs> red rail there. And uh, he goes, "Well, I'd really, I'd really like to see him go." And I said, "All right, well, um, I really like him." So I picked the uh, more original one. This one has a factory motor in it yet. Um, okay. The other one had like a player's motor in it. Oh, okay. But uh, what's in here? Like a Kohler 440 or something? So. This is actually Canadian made CCW motor. Okay. These are uh, just a fan cool 400. Okay. 440. Um, they're very easy to work on, very simple motors. Okay. Um, I mean, I've had that thing down to where it's literally nothing <laughs> before, and I've had it, you know, I've had it back together, and now it's, like I said, at the sled shows. That's a tiny carb on there. Yep. For a 400 or a 440. Yeah, actually, uh, that. That other machine back there has the bigger version, the bigger okay. brother to that carb. Okay. But uh, does that carb work pretty good once you get it cleaned out? Yeah, you? they're actually they're literally very simple carbs to work on. Okay. Um, so you only got the two adjustment screws. Okay. Um, on that side, your high and low range. Yep. And then manual choke, and that's your throttle. Okay. And it's got a built-in fuel pump. So, so you that's... think it only needs a uh, carb clean and it should yeah. be good? And you, I'd probably put a gasket in it. These, this carb never been opened. This okay. was basically how you kind of see it is how I kind of got it. It had never okay. been touched since it was new. Okay. So the gaskets are a little old. Okay. And the fuel pump's getting weak. That's kind of why I parked it. Okay. But uh, yeah, it's it had uh, tail lights on it, and I do have I think the chrome bezels for the front. Okay. So, you got your two headlights. Um, yeah, they're like a little niche market, honestly. Yeah. I mean, you know, they're, they're made for four years, uh, huh. limited, limited, limited production out of Canada, and then, uh, yeah. Yeah, I've never seen one before, so it's kind of cool. I have, I have never seen one until I owned this. <laughs> After I owned this one, it just became like, oh, let's find more weird track stuff. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Yeah. So, does it go pretty good or pretty slow? So it's pretty low, heavy. Low range is low range is maybe like ten at max, but okay. that like it, it's. I used to have a fifteen foot ski boat. That would tow my fifteen foot ski boat around like it was nothing. Wow. The motor didn't groan. Um, high range is according to the paperwork, thirty five. Yeah, it's a little scary. Yeah, that would be scary. It takes a while to get up to 35, but when you get up to 35, it's like, it feels like you're doing a hundred. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a wild ride. So how does this thing steer then? So, you got your tillers, which runs two actuating rods that long, run along the bottom. Okay. You open this up. Yeah, that's interesting. These are two car clutches. Oh, wow. Of like a... I, I was told Volkswagen, but I also heard Renault. But basically, what you do is when you push it, oh yeah, it engages it. It uh, depresses your it depresses your clutch. Yeah, and hits the brake if you steer hard enough, and it'll lock the one track and pivot on it. Ah, uh, okay. Yep. So. So basically, to steer, it's just locking one yep. track or the other. Okay. Locking one track, or it's uh, or it's uh, slowing down. Slowing down one track. Yeah. That is interesting. Yeah, very very simple case. We've had that open before. Um, did the fluid in it? Um, I mean, I greased the bearings every every year before it came out. I always greased the bearings. I was okay. pretty particular about it because you know when you got something like this where you can't really get parts for it. It's not like you can go to Fleet Farm for it. Yeah. Did you find the belt for it by chance? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Electric start work pretty good. Yep. It actually takes a car battery. Okay. So that started really rails on that little 440. Yeah. Um, but it's nice, you know. It's it's got some it's got some oomph when you pull it over. So having the electric start, you know, when yeah. you're tired. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, so you said the pump was weak on it. Yeah. So the diaphragm is just hardened up down here, or what? Yeah, it's got a rubber diaphragm pump. Okay. In it. Um, new fuel and just sitting wherever gaskets go. Okay. Where's the gas tank in this? Right here. Oh, down here. Okay. 
Factory steel tank, five gallons. Okay. Um, we put new rubber fuel line in it. There's all the old stuff is all cracked out. Then a primer bulb. You don't think the seals are gone in the engine, do you? No. It, okay. Because it pumps through. You got compression. Okay. About 150 pounds each cylinder. Okay. So the pump still works here? The, yep. Okay. Yep, the vacuum pump should yep. still work when you hook it all back up. Okay. All right. Yeah, that was my, when we, it started running a little different. Um, that was my first thing. I'm like, oh, please tell me I didn't pull this up. I really, Yeah. I was, we were, we were just putting on the trailer and it just started running rough and I'm like, please tell me. So we actually brought it home and we put the compression tester on and it was still good. I'm like, okay. perfect. But this is another one of those machines where I've had where, you know, it's sitting just kills it. You know, when you get stuff that sits, it just, it kills it. Yeah. <laughs> but. Yeah, it's definitely interesting. <laughs> yeah. You, did you inspect the tracks and everything? They all look pretty good. Yeah, um, they're actually just old conveyor belts. So oh. the, <laughs> you can funny. actually still get tracks. You can get them pre-made. There is, um, you can find them. But basically what you do is there's uh, like a metal, like a, like a piano hinge. Okay. And you take the pin out and the whole track comes out. And then there's these uh, up in here. These, these unscrew. The drives actually unscrew from the track. Oh, okay. And then you can put them on your new rubber. Okay. Yeah. Does it go through belts pretty fast or? No. No. Um, honestly, unless you're smoking the belt, towing something way heavy. Yeah. Like you're trying to tow a car. And honestly, I've never had to smoke a belt. <laughs> okay. Do the brakes work? Yep. Okay. You gotta adjust, might have to adjust some. But okay. Yeah, the brakes do work in this rod. Okay. Yeah, then uh, a lot of guys on eBay remake the uh, the shrouds. Oh, they do. Yep. All right. Well, we got the little tank in the back there. Thing is pretty cool. Um, I guess they only made a couple of them for four years, and um, they had them for the Canadian Army. And then they sold them to the public after. So, definitely a cool machine. It's an all season machine, like the guy was saying. So it goes in dirt, swampy, water, snow, everything. So if we can get this thing to run, we're gonna take it to the land and test her out. It'll be really fun. But uh, we'll get home, and uh, first thing we have to do is get this thing unloaded, and uh, hopefully it's not too heavy to push by myself. All right, it's the next day. Let's go check this thing out. So if you guys missed what the guy was saying, this is in 1970s. I believe it's pronounced passe par tour, uh, which means go anywhere, I believe, in French. So, pretty cool. Look at this, Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. Expires in 1975, that's cool. Snowmobile registration. So. Oh, all that stuff was just sitting on it. I cannot believe it didn't fall off. Where was that going to? Huh, looks like a blinker relay. Interesting. But this has the original engine in it. These were made in Canada. Grease fittings right there for the, the track. So it's dual tracked. It's got a hitch mount. Yeah, you can see even these tracks are stamped. So these are the original tracks, PPT, made in Canada. PPT, and I guess there used to be seats in the back here. They're kind of like um, where you could put your feet in the inside right here. So it could fit about three people. And the seller was saying it could, it could tow pretty much anything.
Well, that was the easy part. The hard part is getting it into there. I think it's cool. Got the gas tank in the back here. Oh, it looks like I had a drain plug right here. That's cool. Draining all the water out of it. Alright, we finally got it in the garage. Good thing we had the four-wheeler to push it in. Because this thing will not move uphill. <laughs> um, but we finally got it in the garage and we can start working on this thing. So these were produced in the 70s and they were actually produced specifically for the Vietnam War, but never never got shipped out. The war ended before these these units could get shipped to Vietnam. But uh, these were tracked units specifically made for the Vietnam environments. So it's basically like a mini tank. And you can imagine what were attached to the sides of these. I can't say it on YouTube, but use your imagination. Um, they were pretty much decked out for the war. But again, never got shipped out. So they were sold to the general public after that in Canada. I believe Quebec. But um, the seller said, this thing used to run. It's been sitting for a long time, he said, so he said it probably just needs a carb clean and a tune up. How does this thing open up here? It must open up the other way. <laughs> Opens up like that. Looks like this is all fiberglass. And I guess some units came with a full enclosure, which are very rare and hard to find today. But you can see the two car clutches in here. And that's how you steer it. So this one locks up as you steer to the left, and this one locks up as you steer to the right. So it'll lock this one up and it'll steer to the left. It'll lock this one up and you can steer to the right. So that's kind of how that works. You can see the old engine on it. So here are the tags, um, model KEC 400, so it's a 400cc, made in Japan, um, expressly for Canadian Curtis Wright, limited by something something. So, yeah, you can see the CCW. Got the Canadian flag there. Ooh, this belt seen better days. So it is fan cooled. I believe I worked on an engine like this before. And then here is that lever for reverse. This is probably low gear and high gear. It's super smooth. <laughs> it does feel like it has pretty good compression yet. Oh boy. Look who's coming to check it out. What do you think, Vin? He's checking out the tracks. What do you think, Benny? First impressions? Pretty cool, isn't it? All right, ignition switch is right here. So I'm guessing that's on. So that's off, that's on. And there's electric start as well. So it's kind of a cool option. Okay, so that looks like that's on. Here's the cable for electric start. It takes a car battery. That's what the guy said. So let's see if we've got some good spark here. It looks like a different uh, spark plug line was added. Looks like they have new plugs in here. Iridium plugs. Looks like here. Alright, 
this is the right plug coming out. Looks like it was running pretty lean. Or maybe he just didn't run it with these plugs very much. They click into place nicely. Left plug, same thing, pretty white. Since it's been sitting, you always want to loop up these cylinders a little bit. We've got some oil here. Just gonna put a little bit down there before we attempt to pull it over multiple times. Feels pretty smooth in there. Let's see if it's got some spark. That one's kind of sparking weird. It's sparking, but very odd. Maybe it's not growing nearly all the way. That one over here is sparking great. This one. Yeah, this one's sparking. Kind of weird. Huh. We'll try a different plug on there. Maybe it's just a follow plug. Let's see if that's got some spark. So that's better spark right there. So I think the spark plug was just fouled. You can see it's good. Okay, we've got good spark. Let's do a quick compression check on each uh, cylinder. Hopefully they're above at least like 100. Ideally, we want above 120, but It'll run probably with a hundred pounds compression. Throttle open. See what we get. Almost a hundred on the first pull. Wow, it's got a lot of compression. Huh. I can barely even pull that over. What the heck? 240 pounds of compression? Is that normal? That seems like a lot. Wow. That is crazy. Alright. <laughs> That's definitely enough to start. I've never seen anything with that much compression before. That's... That's insane. Alright, time for the next cylinder. That is, that's crazy. I wonder if these have like high compression pistons in there. I think it's hard to pull over. Here we go, throttle open. Pull. 230 on that one. I'm sure if I kept on pulling it would be over 250. All right, let's start working on this little carb. We have to get the throttle cable off right here. And that looks like two nuts that hold it on to the engine right there. And then the gas line. There's no return line anywhere on this. I think we need to replace the throttle cable. It looks a little frayed.
He said he's never been in this car before, so. Is that going to leak gas everywhere? Probably. Carp is out. All right, here's the bottom of the carburetor. You can see there's the choke. There's the throttle. Then there's a high and low gear uh, jet. So you can see right there, H for high, low for low. So that's everything basically. So let's start taking this thing apart. See if there's any gunk in here preventing gas from going in. So far it looks good. Yeah, that's all open right here. You can blow through that quick. Just make sure gas was getting in. Yep. So that was good. You can see there's some gas in there. We'll have to do that passageway too right there. That looks like where gas comes into. Last one. Let's see what's going on. You can see there's a little diaphragm. I don't want to rip it. So there's the first one. A little gasket underneath there. There's the diaphragm right there. Doesn't look torn. Might have to try to see what's underneath that one too. Let's see if we can be delicate with it. Don't want to rip it. I just want to clean out all the jets and passageways on this thing. Diaphragm isn't horrible. It's still flexible. Let's see. Here's the needle in the seat here. You can see in there, 
Doesn't appear like the needle is coming down. So I'm wondering if the needle's stuck in there. See it? Got the little spring. And there's that needle. Oh, it dropped right out. Doesn't look like that was clogged. Maybe it was flooding out or something. Feels pretty, feels pretty rubbery at the tip yet. So the needle's probably fine. Let me just check the seat. Let's see if there's any debris in the seat. Oh, the seat looks really clean. Really clean. So everything looks good there. So underneath here are jets. These two covers right there. We might have to take those out. Alright, let's try to get this gasket off of here. Very delicate. We don't want to rip it. Still pretty flexible. So we can blow through all these passageways here. Alright, that all looks good. All those passageways are cleared out. So the low Jet is going to be, let's see here, one, two, two turns out. About three quarters turn out for the high jet. All right, we got the carburetor back together. Thing is absolutely spotless on the inside. I cleaned it out with brake cleaner, plus we blew it out with the air compressor. Um, everything is back to the settings it was supposed to be at. All the passageways are cleared, so. I don't know, and the, uh, the diaphragms look pretty good. But maybe, maybe they're not doing their job. We'll see, we'll reinstall it and see if she fires up here. All right, let's make sure gas is coming out of here. When we pump the ball, let's see. Okay. Let's see if there's any water in the gas here. Doesn't appear to be. All right, we've got our battery hooked up. Let's see if electric start works. We've got one end of the battery hooked to the engine as the ground, and the other hooked to the starter. Um, following the positive cable to the starter. Let's see the cranks over here. Trip, trip. Let's see what happens. So as you can see, it cranks over pretty good. Let's get the spark plugs back in there. Let's see, here we go. Gas is on, everything's good to go. Choke it, Let's see what happens. Add to on.
right, so she randomly just shut off, almost like it uh, ran out of gas or lost spark instantly. So we're gonna check the spark plugs again, see if it's sparking still. I have a feeling those points are dirty. So it looks like we lost spark again on the right cylinder. It only sparks sometimes. This one's sparking good. This one is not. And it's just sporadically sparking. So we will see what's going on. I hope that was the whole problem. That would be nice. Oh, that was only held on by two. Two bolts there. Oh boy. Hopefully, we can get to the points after we take this plate off of here. Open. Otherwise, you have to take off the whole case cover here. got access, sweet. I can see the belt is really ripped. Might have a spare belt somewhere for it. Let's see. Now you can actually see in here where the points would be. Oh yeah, baby. So I'm not sure which side is the right side. If we're looking in there. You can actually see in there some points. Hard to kind of see. Those are the points right here that open and close. And on the other side, there's another set right there. It's not going to focus, is it? Come on, focus. But they're in there, and then you can see the condenser right next to it. We'll try to clean those off. See if that makes a difference here. All right, check this out. This is the kind of spark we're after. That's what I'm talking about. Now that is good spark. All right, now when these things are running good, they should fire up like first pull and run consistently, idle good. So let's see what happens. Now, great spark in both plugs. Alright, this thing's consistently firing up, so we got the brake adjusted and we got the belt on here. The belt appears to be really loose, but maybe that's how it's supposed to be. I don't think it is, but we'll see if it moves with it on there. That cannot be the right belt for it. It's rattling all over the place. Yeah, it's way too loose. Let's go see if I can find a different belt for it.
right, so the new belt works. This belt though is like right by my leg, so if that comes off, I'm getting hit with it. So we're gonna put the belt cover back on. All right, we got the belt guard back on here. Now that belt won't kill us. <laughs> Made it up to the land. It is bright out here. Holy cow. I'm gonna get tan today. All right, let's see what this thing can do. We'll get it unloaded and uh, take it for the first real ride. Okay, here we go. First real ride here. Let's see if she fires up here. There we go.
Let's see her too. She's a little wild though. That wraps up today's video on the, the PPT and uh, yeah she runs great we got this thing running today I think the problem all along was the the points were adjusted incorrectly so we adjusted the points cleaned up the points and she fired right up and now she's running consistently and really really good this thing probably tops out at about 35 miles an hour it's really fast um, for you know going through all this this heavy stuff, obviously not as fast as a snowmobile, but it uh, it goes pretty good. I highly recommend you buy one if you ever find one. These things are so fun to ride. It's right up there with my favorite machine to ride. And it just goes through anything. I could not get this thing stuck today. And believe me, I tried. Just really, really fun machine. So definitely more to come on this thing. I'll probably keep this thing forever since they only paid 840 bucks for it. It's uh, kind of one of a kind and it runs great. So 
Anyway guys, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for the next video. And until next time, we are out.